Hi you guys, I'm Hannah Cruz and this is the Church Musician's Assistant. Welcome back to the channel, or if you're new to the channel, uh, welcome and please subscribe so that you will always see the new videos when we put them out. But today I want to talk about five things that we church musicians should be doing to prepare for the upcoming choir season or push of the music ministry. Most of us at the end of August or beginning of September will start uh, regular choir rehearsals back up after taking somewhat of a break over the summer or maybe even over the past year because of the pandemic. So now is really that crunch time where we are planning and preparing and uh, in my view there are five major questions we should be thinking about uh, during this time. Number one, and this is the longest point of the whole video, so stick with me, but this first one is, how are you going to promote your music ministry and your choir this coming year? Just because our tried and true choir members have come back and choir season has started, doesn't mean we can quit inviting new people in or, um, or hyping up the music program and getting people involved in different ways. I think it's a great idea to invite the congregation into musical participation during worship as much as possible. So this makes the congregation feel more comfortable being a music maker and kind of inviting them into that choral experience. Try to sing responses, congregational responses in worship rather than speak them. What about psalms? If you're going to read a psalm, you might as well sing the psalm. And then another way to invite the congregation into that choral experience is to host something like a one and done choir. You can call it whatever you want, but it would be an event where you say, anyone is welcome to come and learn an easy piece on this Sunday. We'll perform it. It will be informal and fun and uh, you know we're going to teach it to you uh, in a simple way and just get newcomers and amateurs involved um, in leading music with the choir. Now B is um, provide alternative rehearsal schedules that may um, that may allow for people to have new beginnings in the choir and also allow people a little bit of a break from choir if they have been participating for a long time but need a rest period. So uh, this year I'm going to try a monthly schedule where people can basically sign up for a month or four four weeks and they commit to those four weeks and then can decide whether or not to um, commit to the next four weeks. And I'm also going to provide an Advent Choir, which is a, a longer commitment than, um, than a month, but uh, would be like a seasonal opportunity. C, what can you do with the online presence of your mu music ministry? Especially after the COVID pandemic, I think we have all learned how important social uh, networking online is and uh, how beneficial it can be to the music ministry. So um, consider what social media posts you can put out there that will get people engaging with the music. Online presence of the music ministry is super important. So providing high quality audio and visual content for people to worship with online and for um, potential guests to view and kind of know what the program is like at your church. I think that is super beneficial as well. D. Think about how you could contribute to the printed resources your church provides or online resources like the newsletter, the bulletin, um, pew pamphlets. Could you maybe write an interesting article for that or share your favorite playlist? E. 
what kind of events outside of Sunday morning can you get involved in and can you get your choir members involved in? Uh, could you bring in guest artists, give recitals, put together workshops like um, I have one online about singing, singing workshops for beginners or uh, I've done workshops on why we sing as well, why, why music is important for our spiritual lives. All kinds of interesting topics you could go into there. F. Connect with local college students, college professors and teachers and just educators in your area. G. Form relationships with local church musicians and clergy. So look at your little area. What churches are around you? What talent is available? What leadership is available? And what are they doing? How can you contribute to their programs? And how might they be able to contribute to yours? I think it's important just to start building those connections. And you never know what kind of opportunities for ministry will come from that. Then finally, under this first point, um, give leadership opportunities to your choir members, to the willing choir members, of course, because these people who want a little bit more leadership and appreciate that, um, they will be your megaphone. Uh, they will be your promoters, your all-time fans, right? They will be your eyes and ears in the congregation as well. Number two, think about how you will communicate with your music team this year. Make it easy for everyone, including yourself, and keep things simple and clear, right? So um, with email, you can actually schedule emails to send on their own in Gmail and probably other email providers. You can create all these emails ahead of time, schedule them to send at a particular time, and that's gonna save you a lot of hassle and make sure choir members are reminded. You can also send out reminder texts if you have like a group email chain. And then um, aside from just getting the necessary information about events and music out there, I think it's great to communicate um, fun stuff with your, with your music team, like special content such as playlists people can listen to during the week or interesting articles about music or worship, um, free learning res resources that you might find, or uh, anything that might not be available to non-choir members that feels kind of special and exclusive. Number three, how will you stay organized this year? There's so much to keep up with. How are you going to do it without becoming overwhelmed? Well, um, first of all, we have to keep up with our participants, right? I like to use a spreadsheet for this and I'm going to create one and um, drop that in the information box below for you guys to access for free. Those include um, uh, our members, current members, prospective members, um, paid singers and instrumentalists, as well as maybe occasionals, like people who are transient and drop in every once in a while. Then I like to keep up with their contact info, their preferred way of contact, their age, any other demographic information that might be important, and then their talents, which doesn't just include their musical talents. It might also include the fact that, oh, maybe they um, speak Spanish. B, keeping up with events. I like to do this with a Google Calendar that I share with everyone, choir members and the staff, and I keep that updated so they can always see uh, events and you can even write in um, like slots for solos that have not been filled so that anybody looking at it uh, would know, oh, that's open and if they're interested in singing, they could contact you about that. Keeping up with music is uh, C. So I have a spreadsheet where I keep track of the hymns for uh, the week and my prelude and offertory and anthems and postludes and any piece of music that we're doing so that I can 
uh, first of all, I share that with anyone who's like creating bulletins so that they have all that information. And then it's good for me because I can search in my document and see, have we sung this hymn, for example. It also helps me to see in the future which lots I have uh, filled out and which uh, pieces of the liturgy I still need to uh, fill in. D is keeping track of attendance, right? Uh, all of you probably have your own little method of doing that. I really like the option of Doodle or some sort of online uh, sign up sheet where people can type in when they're going to be gone or you could either do sign up or sign out, whatever. But uh, it's super helpful to know who's planning on coming when. Now, lastly is E, and this is budget and anything that has to do with money, right? I think it's a good idea to be transparent about this. Let all of your team members know uh, how much money is available, what's being spent on uh, which things, and maybe even keep what, keep up with um, your paid singers on that budget spreadsheet as well. Number four, how will you get feedback both from your choir members and your congregation? So there are a number of ways to do this. Um, this summer we have already had one choir brainstorming day and we have another choir planning day planned for this next Sunday. And I really like the idea of doing a meeting like this with your current members um, to get their thoughts about future goals and to dole out different leadership tasks. We talked about that earlier. To clean up any um, rooms, choir rooms, sanctuary that need a sprucing up and to decorate it the way that the choir wants. And then maybe even to read through some anthems and hymns which might be unfamiliar and get some feedback on those before you program them. Another thing you can try is a questionnaire, like a Google form type of thing uh, for the congregation if you really need to get information about some specific questions. C, have conversations directly face-to-face -face with people, especially after worship. You're building this warm, trusting relationship with your congregants by asking for their honest opinion. Um, just make sure that you're willing to be open and, um, and communicative about what they have to say, even if it is negative. Last point here would be to solicit feedback and comments on social media. Make sure you ask a very specific question which really limits the quality of the answers so that you don't get a lot of um, negativity and hate. Sometimes that can happen on social media um, because people feel really disconnected from who they're actually talking about or talking to. That's how social media affects us, unfortunately. So um, be very positive in your uh, in the post that you create and ask for a very specific answer. Number five, we've made it to the end guys. Thank you for following along this uh, whole video. So number five is, maybe this is the most important one, um, how will you stay healthy and motivated as a leader this year? Um, I created a video a while back about spiritual practices to keep your your spirit nourished as a church musician and so I'll link that below in the um, in the box I think that that one's very important to um, make sure you've got strong spiritual practices that you can rely on at home and then the second one is very very important work on your relationships with other staff members particularly through your pastor I've seen so many comments um, in our church music related Facebook groups and stuff about um, these toxic staff relationships and how it's it's often forced church musicians to leave their posts um, and it's just caused them so much grief and heartache so these relationships we have to work on intentionally working on honesty and respectfulness um, trust 
don't feel afraid to reach out for help amongst other church musicians as well. C, and this point kind of follows from the last one, remind your staff and your congregation uh, all the time of your value and the value of your music ministry. You don't have to be haughty and come out and say, you know, I do this and this, and so you really should um, pay me more respect or uh, pay me more <laughs> money, um, but just demonstrate all the time, every Sunday, your worth and keep pushing for bigger and better um, goals and a better uh, ministry. And I think oftentimes your staff and your church will see that over time. And if they don't, well, maybe that church is not the place for you. D, choose stimulating music, inspiring music that gets your team members excited but also motivates you to practice and to rehearse and to perform. And then E, this is the last point of this video. Set a goal, an achievable goal, that you're really passionate about for this year. What do you want to accomplish as a musician this year? Or what do you want to accomplish in your music ministry? Maybe it's a skill you want to learn, or a program you want to start, or whatever. But it's got to be something you're passionate about, something with a achievable steps that's not going to necessarily overwhelm you, but it's going to push you. It's going to be your why for this year. If you ever get discouraged, you're going to go back to that goal and say, take a deep breath. This is why I do what I do. And this is the next step I'm going to take to achieve that. Okay, guys, thank you so much for following along throughout this video. I hope it's been uh, helpful for you. Leave a comment below about, um, what you're planning to do to prepare yourself and your choir, your music ministry for the upcoming year. What, uh, what's your biggest goal? What's your biggest challenge? Leave a comment below. I'm super interested to hear. Make sure you like this video if you found it helpful and to subscribe to the Church Musicians Assistant. Again, I'm Hannah Cruz. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I bless you and your music ministries.